shall now follow the next immediate question that is question number 31. In this question, he is giving us that mod z plus 2 minus i is equal to 5, then the maximum value of modulus of 3z plus 9 minus 7i is equal to how much? He is asking us. The first option is 20, second option is 15, third option is 5 and the fourth option is 16. Let us calculate, let us try to find the maximum value of 3z plus 9 minus 7i. What is it? What is the data? First of all, we may have to notice it. What is that? Mod z plus 2 minus i. is equal to 5. Okay, what is the complex number whose modulus is required? Modulus of 3z plus 9 minus 7i. Modulus of 3z plus 9 minus 7i is equal to. This is of course the actual thing required. We are now directly finding it. Well, how to find it? You note down one particular thing in your mind. You must be able to use the data given. Yes? Well, let me now try to bring this concept, rather this number into the fray. How can you get it? It's very simple. Look here. This is 3 into z plus 2 minus i. Observe that carefully. This is 3z. 3z is okay. This is 9, 3 2s are only 6, still 3 balance is there, plus 3, 6 plus 3, 9, okay, 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 again, 3 minus, uh, 3 into a minus i, minus 3i, but you see, we have here it is minus 7i, still minus 4i is required. I think you could have caught the idea. The only way or the only idea which helps us to make an attack on this question is at any cost or at any stage we must be use we must be using we must be able to use the data that is z plus 2 minus i that should appear before us that's all. You just take 3 out bring it here you balance it so that this entire expression becomes equal to this. Now the actual thing occurs. Now iterate this as some a and this as some b. How does it look? Mod a plus b. What is mod a plus b? Is less than or equal to mod a plus mod b. That is this is less than or equal to modulus of 3 into z plus 2 minus i plus modulus of 3 minus 4i, right? Yes, of course. What property you could have made use of? Mod a plus b less than or equal to mod a plus mod b. What is this? This is, e this is, uh, this is equal to mod 3 into mod z plus 2 minus i plus what is modulus of 3 minus 4i? Square root of 9 plus 16. Good. What is mod 3? what is mod z plus 2 minus i he has given us what is that it is 5 hence it is 3 into 5 plus 9 plus 16 is 25 root 25 is 5 3 5 is 15 15 plus 5 is 20 at last at what step you could have arrived at that is modulus of 3 z plus 9 minus 7 i is less than or equal to 20 that is this value can never exceed 20. Either it is less than 20 or is equal to 20, but can never exceed 20. What do you say about it? The maximum value of that is 20. The maximum value of uh, mod 3z plus 9 minus 7i is 20. So, the among the given options, option A is the right option and the right answer is maximum value is 20. The next question before us is question number 32. If z1 and z2 are complex numbers such that z1 cube minus 3 z1 z2 square is equal to 2 and 3 z1 square z2 minus z2 cube is equal to 11, then mod z1 square plus z2 square is. Observe it carefully. This is question number 32 of course. What are given? z1 cube. 
माइनस थ्री जेड वन जेड टू स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू टू एंड थ्री जेड वन स्क्वायर जेड टू माइनस जेड टू क्यूब इज इक्वल टू लेवन इज इक्वल टू लेवन देन विच इज रिक्वायर्ड य mod z1 square plus mod z2 square we want to have we want to have well here let us use a simple technique you can easily observe that z1 cube is a perfect cube z2 cube is a perfect cube 3c1 3c2 that is 3 and 3 coefficients are occurring we may make use of some a plus b whole cube how can it be done let us look at this you see you please consider what is 2 plus 11i what is 2 plus 11i 2 means z1 cube minus 3 z1 z2 square plus 3i z1 square z2 minus i z2 cube this is just nothing but z1 plus i z2 whole cube s this is the basic idea that one must possess to get the required how to get this idea it's very simple the first term here and the last term here are perfect cubes we can make use of i here so that we have z1 plus i z2 whole cube therefore what could you achieve 2 plus 11i is equal to z1 plus i z2 whole cube. Absolutely and exactly in the similar fashion, you will be able to have 2 minus 11i is equal to z1 minus i z2. Z1 minus i z2 whole cube. Let me multiply these two. Let us see what is going to happen. 2 plus 11i into 2 minus 11i is equal to z1 plus i z2 into z1 minus i z2 whole cube whole cube z1 plus i z2 into z1 minus i z2 what can you achieve here this is uh, you call this say some uh, z This is z and this is z bar. What is that? Z z bar is nothing but mod z square, isn't it? It is mod z square. Therefore, therefore, this is mod z one square plus z two square. Whole cube is equal to a plus i b into a minus b. What is that? A square plus b square. Four plus one twenty one. One twenty one plus four is one twenty five. That is five cube. This cube is equal to five cube. Therefore, mod z one square plus z two square is therefore equal to five. Is it available? Yes, it is available among the options. Option C gives you the answer five. So the answer is five. We shall now look at the next question. That is question number thirty-three. If lambda is a real number, that is lambda belongs to R, and non-real roots of two z square plus two z plus lambda is equal to zero, and origin forms the vertices of an equilateral triangle, then lambda is equal to. That's a beautiful question. To answer this question, you may have to remember and recollect one of the beautiful properties of an equilateral triangle, provided the vertices are given in terms of complex numbers. Yes, let us recollect it. First of all, what is data? There are two roots, two z square plus two z plus lambda is equal to zero. Two roots of this equation, two z square plus two z plus lambda is equal to zero. Let me call those roots B. Let the roots be 
जेड वन जेड टू देर फॉर जेड वन जेड टू जेड थ्री आर दी वर्टिस ऑफ एन इक्विलेटरल ट्राइंगल इक्विलेटरल ट्राइंगल वेर ऑफ कोर्स जेड थ्री is equal to r is in 0 plus i g o he has given that yes the third vertex is at r is in well from this we will be having one more thing what is that z1 square plus z2 square plus z3 square is equal to z1 z2 plus z2 z3 plus z3 z1 this is the most beautiful property of uh, an equilateral triangle provided the vertices z1 z2 and z3 are given you must be able to recollect it and we are now going to use it here yes let it be kept at one side with our z1 and z2 roots of this equation therefore what must you have z1 plus z2 that is sum of the roots Z1 plus Z2, sum of the roots. What is sum of the roots? Minus b by a. That is minus 2 by 2 is minus 1. And Z1, Z2. What is Z1, Z2? Product of the roots. It is c by a. It is lambda by 2. It is lambda by 2. Here, in this condition, what is Z3? Origin. That is 0. 0 square is again 0. Therefore, Z1 square plus Z2 square is equal to Z1, Z2. Z1, Z2, Z2, Z3, Z3 is origin. Z2 into zero, zero, zero into Z1, zero. There were what happens to the right hand side? Just Z1, Z2 we have. Okay, Z1 square plus Z2 square is equal to Z1, Z2. Let me add two Z1, Z2 on both the sides. Z1 square plus Z2 square plus two Z1, Z2 is equal to three Z1, Z2. Isn't it? Why should you add two z one z two so that you can observe that the left hand side is z one plus z two whole square z one plus z two whole square is equal to three z one z two. But you see what is z one plus z two? It is given to be minus one. So minus one whole square is equal to three into lambda by two. Because z one z two is lambda by two, therefore minus one whole square is one. Hence lambda is equal to two by three. What is the value of lambda we have got? It is two by three. Is it available? It is available in the option D. That is fourth option. Answer is two by three. The next question is question number thirty-four. The greatest positive argument of Z satisfying mod Z minus four is equal to real part of Z is. The greatest positive argument of Z satisfying mod Z minus four is equal to real part of Z is. First option pi by three. Second option two pi by three. Third option pi by two. And the fourth option pi by four. What is the condition uh, that has been given on the Z? Mod z minus four is equal to real part of z, isn't it? Yes. Let me take let a z is equal to x plus psi y. From data, mod z minus four is equal to Mod x plus i y minus four is equal to what is real part of z x square it on both sides. Mod x minus four plus i y is equal to x that is root of x minus four whole square plus y square is equal to x by squaring x minus four whole square plus y square is equal to x square. If you can cancel x square, what are you going to get? It is y square minus 8x plus 16 is equal to zero. Plus 16 is equal to zero. This is equal to. This implies 
y square is equal to 8x minus 16 that is 8 into x minus 2 that is 4 into 2 into x minus 2 anybody can easily see that it is a parabola it is surely a parabola whose vertex is at 2 0 and the focus is 4 0 isn't it very clear to say that uh, this is a parabola with vertex 2 0 it is in the form y square equal to 4x you see it is a 2 but the vertex is 2 0 so the actual vertex is 2 plus 2 4 4 comma 0 the c is a parabola with let us uh, look at the parabola Four zero is the focus, two zero is the vertex, two zero, this is four zero. Can we imagine the a directrix here? What is the directrix? The distance is two. Yes, you just move two units back, you will be getting horizon, isn't it? Therefore, it is a point on the directrix. As of course, horizon is a point on the directrix. And from the properties of a parabola, we know is that if you can draw tangents to the parabola from any point on the directrix, they will be at right angles, you know. Yes. So, the maximum angles, maximum angle is of course 90 degrees there and if z is any point on that parabola, z is any point on that parabola, we are required to have argument of z. Argument of z means the angle made by if if the point z is say taken some p, then the angle made by op with x-axis, the maximum angle of the tangent, of course, there it is, and it is 45. Between two tangents, it is 90. So between one tangent and x-axis, it is 45. Therefore, the largest angle, rather the largest positive argument, the greatest positive argument of Z is 45 degrees or simply pi by 4 is the right answer. Here we could have made use of the properties of the parabola. Yes, from conic section, that is from parabola, you are supposed to make use of the property. The answer is pi by 4. The option D is the right answer. In this question, if Z and W are two complex numbers such that Z bar plus I W bar is equal to 0 and arc Z W is equal to pi, then arc Z is equal to. That's a beautiful question. You must be able to use every piece of the data very carefully. Let us now gather the pieces of information in the data. The first one is Z bar plus I W bar is equal to 0. And the other is argument of ZW is equal to pi. Argument of ZW is equal to pi. What is required here? Our Z is required. Good. First of all, let me make use of this. Argument of ZW is arg Z plus arg W is equal to pi. This is a useful, useful information. Let us keep it aside. Now, let us consider this. Z bar plus I W bar is 0. Let me consider the complex conjugates on both the sides. What happens? Z bar plus I W bar bar is equal to conjugate of 0. What is conjugate of 0? Again, 0. Therefore, Z bar bar plus I bar W bar bar is equal to 0. Conjugate of conjugate of z is again z. z minus i i bar is what is the conjugate of i bar? What is the conjugate of i minus i w is equal to 0. Therefore, z is equal to i w, isn't it? So, here in the place of z, what can you have? i w. Therefore, argument of i w plus argument of w is equal to pi. What is argument of i w? Argument of i plus argument of w plus 
argument of w is equal to pi what is argument of y what is the point complex number i the point corresponding to i in the orgon plane is 0 1 it lies on y axis hence it makes 90 degrees with the positive direction of x axis hence its amplitude that is the argument is pi by 2 well arg i is pi by 2 plus 2 into arg w is equal to pi send this pi by 2 to that side what happens 2 into argument of w is equal to pi minus pi by 2 of course pi by 2 2 into argument of w is pi by 2 well what is argument of w argument of w is equal to pi by 4 successful we are able to have argument of w but you see the question is argument of z not w that is the heroine of the problem z but not w what is argument of z luckily we could have got argument of w as pi by 4 now let me make use of the equation 1 which is uh, kept uh, kept stored in the beginning itself now the first equation now implies in the place of argument of w what can you have pi by 4 therefore argument of z plus pi by 4 is equal to pi send this pi by 4 to that side what happens argument of z hence it is uh, pi minus pi by 4 that is 3 pi by 4 is there available yes of course it is available in the third option option c is the right option and the right answer is 3 pi by 4 that is the question so here in this question the beautiful concept is argument of jw is pi that has helped us a lot moreover the idea of getting conjugates on both the sides is also an important idea this simple idea can change the life of this problem of course how can you get that idea how can you get that idea because in the question we are inquired of about z and w but in the data it has been given z bar and w bar so it is necessary for us to omit that bar that is uh, you are supposed to kick and gain the complex conjugates to the data thereby getting the answer as uh, 3 pi by 4 that is option c the next question before us is that is sixth question he has given as a function f of x is equal to 2x cube plus 2x square minus 7x plus 72 then what is f of 3 minus 5i by 2 he is asking us f of 3 minus 5i by 2 he is asking us yes from earlier days of uh, earlier algebra if there is a function f of x then the reminder when f of x is divided by x minus a is f of a isn't it of course there is a basic reminder theorem now let me call that 3 minus 5i by 2 as some a as some a so we are asked to have f of a so it is nothing but it is the reminder when f of x is divided by x minus a let us think of it in that fashion what is going to be obtained let us see what is f of x of course the options are 1 2 3 and 4 let me see let us see what is f of x the question number is actually 36 f of x is 2x cube plus 3x square 2x square not 3x square it is 2x square 2x square minus 7x plus 72 and he likes to ask us what is f of 3 minus 5y by 2 f of 3 minus 5y by 2 let me take x is equal to 3 minus 5y by 2 then what happens 2x is equal to 3 minus 5y that is 2x minus 3 is equal to minus 5y square it on both sides 2x minus 3 whole square is equal to minus 5y whole square expand this whole square 
फोर एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस नाइन माइनस ट्वेल्व एक्स माइनस टू है अभी माइनस ट्वेल्व एक्स इज इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी फाइव आई स्क्वायर दैट इज माइनस ट्वेंटी फाइव माइनस फाइव होल स्क्वायर इज ट्वेंटी फाइव कॉस वाई स्क्वायर इज आई स्क्वायर इज माइनस वन सो इट इज माइनस ट्वेंटी फाइव ब्रिंग दट माइनस ट्वेंटी फाइव दट दिस साइड फोर एक्स स्क्वायर माइनस ट्वेल्व एक्स प्लस ट्वेंटी फाइव प्लस नाइन इज थर्टी फोर इज इक्वल टू जीरो देर फोर टू एक्स स्क्वायर माइनस सिक्स एक्स प्लस सेवनटीन इज इक्वल टू जीरो नाउ लेट एस अप्लाई डिविजन एल्गोरिदम व्हाट हैपेंस व्हेन एफ फोर एक्स इज डिवाइडेड विद दिस लेट मी सी व्हाट इज दैट टू एक्स क्यूब प्लस टू एक्स स्क्वायर माइनस सेवन एक्स प्लस सेवेंटी टू इज गोइंग टू बी डिवाइडेड विथ टू एक्स स्क्वायर माइनस सिक्स एक्स प्लस सेवनटीन divided 2x cube by 2x square is x x into 2x square is 2x cube x into minus 6x is minus 6x square x into 17 is 17x subtract here these two will go away 2x square plus 6x square 8x square minus 7 minus 17 minus 24x plus 72 8x square by 2x square is 4. So plus 4. 8x square minus 24x. 4 17s are 68. If you can subtract it, 4 you are going going to get as the remainder. Therefore, the remainder when 4x is divided by this, that is nothing but x minus a. That is f of a is 4. Let us repeat it once again. How could you get this expression? You get, you could have got this expression by equating x equal to a. That is by x minus a. You have divided. Hence, the remainder is f of a. That is four. What is the answer? Fourth option. That is four. Option D is the right option. Answer four is the right answer for this question. The next question is question number thirty-seven. If cos alpha plus cos beta plus cos gamma is equal to zero is equal to sine alpha plus sine beta plus sine gamma, then sigma sine square alpha is there is sine square alpha plus sine square beta plus sine square gamma is. It can easy. It is one of the standard questions, of course. It's very easy to estimate. Let us now gather the given information. What is that? Cos alpha plus cos beta plus cos gamma is equal to zero is equal to sine alpha plus sine beta plus sine gamma. Then what is the value of sigma sine square alpha? What is sigma sine square alpha? It's nothing but sine square alpha plus sine square beta plus sine square gamma. We'd like to have it. Now let me take x is equal to cos alpha plus i sine alpha. Y is equal to cos beta plus i sin beta z is equal to cos gamma plus i sin gamma let me consider three complex numbers with real parts cos alpha cos beta cos gamma and imaginary part sin alpha sin beta sin gamma respectively so that i may be able to use the given items well you add all these things what do you have X plus y plus z is therefore equal to cos alpha plus cos beta plus cos gamma zero. I into sine alpha plus sine beta plus sine gamma zero. Zero plus i zero is again zero. So x plus y plus z is zero. Moreover, from this we can say one by x is equal to actually x is cis alpha. What is one by x? One by cis alpha is cis minus alpha. That is nothing but Cos alpha minus i sin alpha. One by y is equal to cos beta minus i sin beta. One by z is equal to cos gamma minus i sin gamma. You add all these things, you will be getting one by x plus one by y plus one by z is also 
cos alpha plus cos beta plus cos gamma zero minus i into sin alpha plus sin beta plus sin gamma zero. That is both x plus y plus z is equal to zero and one by x plus one by y plus one by z is also zero. Well, let me square it on both sides. What happens? What happens? X square plus y square plus z square is equal to minus two into x y plus y z plus z x, isn't it? Let me take x y z as a common factor. What do you have? One by x plus one by y plus one by z. You see, we could have derived that one by x plus one by y plus one by z is also zero. So zero into anything is again zero, hence it is zero. So x square plus y square plus z square is zero. What is x? Cos alpha plus sin alpha. What is x square? Cos alpha plus sin alpha whole square. That is cis alpha whole square plus cis beta whole square plus cis gamma whole square is zero. Use the De Moivre's theorem. What do you have? Cis two alpha plus cis two beta plus cis two gamma is equal to zero. We could have arrived at six two alpha plus cis two beta plus cis two gamma is equal to zero. This is of course the powerful weapon with us to get the required. There is a sigma sine square alpha. How can it be got? We shall see. We shall see. Actually, we want to get sigma sine square alpha. That is the main item here. Well, at the last step previously, we could have arrived at cis two alpha plus cis two beta plus cis two gamma is equal to zero. That is cos two alpha plus cos two beta plus cos two gamma plus i into sin two alpha plus sin two beta plus sin two gamma is equal to zero. Zero means zero plus i zero. Now you compare. You can compare both real parts and imaginary parts on both the sides, so that you have cos two alpha, that is sigma cos two alpha, is equal to zero, and sigma sine two alpha is also zero. Of course, let us first make use of this. What is cos two alpha? Sigma one minus two sine square alpha is equal to zero. What is meant by the sigma? One minus two sine square alpha plus one minus two sine square beta plus one minus two sine square gamma. If you add all those things, it is Three minus two into sine square alpha plus sine square beta plus sine square gamma is equal to zero. From that, you can directly have the answer. Sigma sine square alpha is equal to three by two. What is the right answer? Three by two. Is it available? It is available in the second option. That is, option B is the right option, and three by two is the right answer for this question. We make a move to see the next question. That is question number thirty-eight. Let's say denote the set of all complex numbers, and let us define two sets capital A and capital B as capital A is equal to set of all pairs of complex numbers Z and W such that Z W belong to C and mod Z is equal to mod W. That is set of all ordered pairs of complex numbers in which the first complex number and the second complex number are equidistant from origin. That is of equal modulus. In a similar fashion, you know the set capital B is also defined as the set of all ordered pairs of complex numbers Z and W such that that is Z and W belong to C. Of course, Z square is equal to W square. Then what happens? A is equal to B. A subset of B, B subset of A, none. It's quite interesting. Let's see, you can have if mod Z is equal to mod W, then mod Z square is equal to mod Z whole square is equal to mod W whole square. It need not imply that Z square is equal to W square. Whereas if Z square is equal to W square is given, if you take mod less on both the sides, mod Z square is equal to mod W square. Is this mod z whole square is equal to mod w whole square? Thereby you have mod z is equal to mod w. Therefore, if you take an ordered pair in the set B, it belongs to the set A. Hence, what can you say? B is a subset of A. Is the correct option? That is option C is the right option. That is B is a subset of A. 
The next question before us is question number 39. Now, which is uh, a, a special case of interest? Mod Z1 is one and Mod Z2 is also one. That is, Z1 and Z2 are complex numbers of unit modulus. It is an asset for us. Uh, what I mean to say is, uh, if you want to write them in mod amplitude form, modulus is 1. So, it is just e power i theta. That is, uh, cos theta plus i sin theta like that. So, gathering the information. What is the information? Mod Z1 is equal to 1 and mod Z2 is also 1 that has been given. So, with that in my mind, I would like to consider let Z1 is equal to cos alpha plus i sin alpha and Z2 is equal to cos beta plus i sin beta. And what we need to have, we need to calculate mod Z1 plus Z2 and mod Z1 minus Z2. So, you must be having, you must be knowing what Z1 plus Z2 and what Z1 minus Z2 is. Let us see. You adjust, add these two. What, are, what is going to be obtained? Z1 plus Z2 is equal to cos alpha plus cos beta plus i into sin alpha plus sin beta. i into sin alpha plus sin beta and z1 minus z2 is equal to what is z1 minus z2 cos alpha minus cos beta plus i into sin alpha minus sin beta we have got the actual need of the question is not z1 plus z2 and z2 minus z2 but some of their moduli that is, uh, you find mod Z1 plus Z2 and mod Z1 minus Z2 at a time. What is mod Z1 plus Z2? Square root of cos alpha plus cos beta whole square plus sin alpha plus sin beta whole square plus cos alpha minus cos beta whole square plus sin alpha minus sin beta whole square. Now, let us avoid certain steps. What is cos alpha plus cos beta whole square? Cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus 2 cos alpha cos beta. Here, sin square alpha plus sin square beta plus 2 sin alpha sin beta. If you add them, cos square alpha plus sin square alpha, 1. Cos square beta plus sin square beta, 1. 1 plus 1, 2. Again, 2 cos alpha cos beta plus 2 sin alpha sin beta. What does it mean? 2 into cos alpha minus beta. Therefore, the first thing is root of 2 plus 2 cos alpha minus beta. Again, the second one cos square alpha plus sin square alpha okay cos square beta plus sin square beta is also okay 1 plus 1 2 of course here you may have to get minus 2 out minus 2 into cos alpha cos beta plus sin alpha sin beta that is uh, root of 1 minus 2 cos alpha minus beta well let me take this alpha minus beta as some theta in my mind how does it look? 1, 2 into 1 plus cos theta. What is 1 plus cos theta? 2 cos square theta by 2. Already 2 is here. So, it is 4 cos square theta by 2. 4 cos square theta by 2 means 2 cos theta by 2. There it is. 1 minus 2 cos theta. Sorry, it is 2. 1 plus 1. 2. 2 into 1 minus cos theta is 2 sin square theta by 2. That is 4 sin square theta by 2. Under root it is 2 sin theta by 2. 2 sin theta by 2. Where theta is? Come on. Where theta is? Alpha minus beta. 
alpha minus beta. Let me consider this once again. Let me get 2 out. Let me get 2 out. That is 2 into cos theta by 2 plus sin theta by 2. I would like to write 2 root 2 into 1 by root 2 cos theta by 2 plus 1 by root 2 sin theta by 2. It is just nothing but sin of pi by 4 plus theta by 2. Sin of pi by 4 plus theta by 2. Sin A cos B plus cos A sin B does look like that. Whatever might be the value which is inside this bracket, this is sine of something, sine value, it can never exceed 1. It can never exceed 1. Therefore, this is less than or equal to 2 root 2 into 1, that is 2 root 2. What could you notice? What could you notice? Mod z1 plus z2 plus mod z1 minus z2 can never exceed 2 root 2. It is either less than that or at most equal to that. Hence, it uh, the maximum value is 2 root 2. Is it available? Of course, it is uh, in option B. Therefore, the right option is B and the right answer is uh, 2 root 2. The next question is uh, question number 40. In this question, we have been given a series of complex numbers. Now, a, a set of a bunch of complex numbers, uh, four complex numbers, Z1, Z2, Z3 and Z4. He is saying, ZR with 1 less than or equal to R less than or equal to 4 be complex numbers such that mod ZR is equal to root R plus 1 and modulus of 30 Z1 plus 20 Z2 plus 15 Z3 plus 12 Z4 is equal to K into modulus of Z1, Z2, Z3 plus Z2, Z3, Z4 plus Z3, Z4, Z1 plus Z4, Z1, Z2. Oh, a lengthy expression has been given. No question of any confusion. It can be, it can be solved very easily. Let us observe that. Then value of K is, uh, he is asking us, value of K is, the first option, he has given it to be mod Z1, Z2, Z3 and the second option is Z2, Z3, Z4 and the third option is Z4, Z1, Z2 and the fourth option is none. Let us see. Let us first gather the information. There are four complex numbers with mod ZR is equal to root R plus 1. That is mod Z1 is equal to root 2, mod z2 is equal to root 3, mod z3 is equal to root 4, that is 2, mod z4 is equal to root 5, root 5. Let us keep it aside. One more thing and useful information has been given, of course it looks so lengthy, let us use it. What is that? Modulus of 30Z1 plus 20Z2 plus 15Z3 Z3 plus 12Z4 is equal to K into Z1, Z2, Z3 Z1, Z2, Z3 plus Z2, Z3, Z4 plus Z3, Z4, Z1 plus Z4, Z1, Z2. Am I right? Yes, of course. That has been given a lengthy expression. Then the value of K is equal to. So, we want to obtain K. So, we uh, we try to eliminate uh, the the uh, the uh, quantities uh, lying this side and that side b beside k as uh, uh, conveniently as possible. Now for that, let me see one thing. What is the LCM of 30, 20, 15 and 12? What is the LCM of 30, 20, 15 and 12? It is 60. It is 60. I like to divide it uh, with 60. What happens? Modulus of 
30 z1 by 60 means z1 by 2 20 z2 by 60 means z2 by 3 15 z3 by 60 means z3 by 4 plus z4 by 5 is equal to k by 60 into mod z1 z2 z3 z4 into mod 1 by z4 plus 1 by z1 plus 1 by z2 plus 1 by z3. I think you can say okay with that. We have just got mod z1 z2 z3 z4 out. Well, this is what is uh, 2? It is mod z1 square, isn't it? z1 is mod z1 is root 2. So, by 2, I can write mod z1 square. Mod z1 square is z1 z1 bar. Therefore, z1 by z1 z1 bar is nothing but 1 by z1 bar. Just like that, 3 mod z2 square. That is z2 z2 bar z2 by z2 bar what is that okay i think uh, some more another step we use what is this z1 by what is 2 mod z1 square that is z1 z1 bar z2 by z2 z2 bar z3 by z3 z3 bar z4 by z4 z4 bar is equal to mod k by 16 to mod z1 mod z2 mod z3 mod z4 into 1 by z1 plus 1 by z2 plus 1 by z3 plus 1 by z4 bar Previously, it was not there. I have put here. Is it true? Of course, mod z is equal to mod z bar we have. Well, what is this here? z1 and z1 go away, leaving you 1 by z1 bar, 1 by z2 bar, 1 by z3 bar, 1 by z4 bar. You have inside the more or less. And in the right hand side also, what is this? The conjugate of this sum, sum of conjugates, that is 1 by z1 bar plus 1 by z2 bar plus 1 by z3 bar plus 1 by z4 bar. Therefore, we can easily understand that this and this can easily be cancelled. So that, what do you have? K is therefore is equal to, K is therefore is equal to 60 by mod z1, mod z2, mod z3 mod z4 is equal to 60 by what is mod z1 root 2 into root 3 into root 4 into root 5 what is that root 2 into root 3 into root 4 into root 5 that is root 120 isn't it root 120 that is root 60 into root 2 60 by root 60 is root 60 root 60 by root 3 is nothing but root 30 root 30 okay now you check the options which option may give you root 30 what is what about a mod z1 in mod z1 into mod z2 into mod z3 what is that root 2 into root 3 into root 4 it is not uh, root 60 option b mod z2 into mod z3 into mod z4 root 3 into root 4 into root 5 it is not uh, root 30. It is not. Uh, what is up? Uh, what about option Z? Root Z5. Sorry. Root 5. Mod Z4 into mod Z2 into mod Z3. It is root 5 into root 2 into root 3. Root 30. It is correct. So the option C is the right option. Or even you can write this 30 as mod Z1. That is root 2. Mod Z2 into root 3 mod z4 that is root 5 is nothing but mod z1 z2 z4 it is available in which option option c 
has the right of snissi. Even though the data contains lengthy expressions of this form, you may not get frightened about that. He has given a lengthy expression means he may offer us a small loophole in that. Of course, it is necessary for us to, to, to search for that loophole, to make use of that like this. Therefore, what is the value of k? The numerical value is of course square root of 30. And if you want to express that in terms of Z1, Z2, Z, etc., it will be mod Z1, Z2 into Z4. There is option C is, of course, the right option among them. Therefore, the right answer is root 30. That is mod Z1, Z2, Z4. And the right option is C. That is the question.